नमः शिवाय स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स कंप्लीट द चैप्टर बर्थ द फ्लोर वाज नाउ अ ड्रैगल्ड मेस स्टम्बलिंग ओवर अ सोपिंग टाल एंड्रू ऑलमोस्ट ड्रॉप द चाइल्ड व्हिच वाज नाउ वेट एंड स्लिपरी इन हिज हैंड्स लाइक अ स्ट्रेंज व्हाइट फिश फॉर मर्सी सेक डॉक्टर विंपर द मिडवाइफ इट्स स्टिल बोर्न एंड्रू डिड नॉट हीड हर बीटन despairing having having labored in vain for half an hour he still persisted in one last effort rubbing the child with a rough towel crushing and releasing the little chest with both his hands trying to get breath into that limp body after the continued struggle the floor was extremely wet and dirty the doctor almost slipped on the towel and he was just about to lose hold of the child The child was also wet and he is being compared to a white fish. The midwife then pleaded before the doctor and told him to stop as the child is stillborn or lifeless. The doctor has tried for almost half an hour now and he was desperate enough to bring life to the child. He was sweating, he was very much tired but yet he tried to do some last efforts and bring life to the child he rubbed the child with a rough towel and tried to press the little chest of his body so that breath comes into the little body and then by as by a miracle the pygmy chest which his hands enclosed gave a short convulsion he another and another and returned giddy the sense of life springing beneath his fingers after all that un- unveiling striving was so exquisite it almost made him faint he redoubled his efforts feverishly the child was gasping now deeper and deeper a bubble of mucus came from one tiny nostril a joyful ir- iridescent bubble the limb were no longer boneless the head no longer lay back spinelessly the blanked skin was slowly turning pink then exquisitely came the child's cry just as it was a miracle the little chest which was enclosed in andrew's hands took a breath he continued heaving leaving andrew weak in his knees the feeling of the little one's breathing on his fingers almost made him faint instantly he worked on reviving him with double the efforts until the child breathed deeply as he gasped a lit a bubble fo- formed by the mucus was formed from his tiny nose his pale skin turned pink and the body no longer felt like it was lifeless the next instant he started crying Dear Father in heaven, the nurse sobbed hysterically. It's come, it's come alive. Andrew handed her the child. He felt weak and dazed. About him, the room lay in a shuddering litter. Blankets, towels, basins, soiled instruments, the hypodermic syringe impaled by its point in the linoleum. The ewer knocked over. Over. The kettle on its side in a puddle of water. upon the huddled bed the mother still dreamed her way quietly through the anesthetic the old woman still stood against the wall but her hands were together her lips moved, moved without sound she was praying the nurse muttered the words of prayer while tears rolled down her eyes as andrew handed her the child he felt extremely weak and tired the room was obviously a mess by this time all the equipment including blankets towels basins soiled instruments the hypodermic syringe the ewer and the kettle were all in a terrible state the mother lay still on the bed the anesthesia still had its effect susan's mother stood still in one place constantly moving her lips in prayer Mechanically Andrew wrung out his sleeves pulled on his jacket I'll fetch my bag later nurse He went downstairs 
through the kitchen into the scullery. His lips were dry. At the scullery, he took a long drink of water. He reached for his hat and coat. Outside, he found Joe standing on the pavement with a tense, expectant face. All right, Joe, he said thickly, both all right. It was quite light, nearly five o'clock. A few miners were already in the streets, the first of the night shift moving out. As Andrew walked with them, spent and slow, his footfalls echoing with the others under the morning sky. He kept thinking blindly, obviously oblivious to all other work he had done in Blenily. I have done something, oh God, I have done something real at last. Andrew unfolded his sleeves and put on his jacket while informing the nurse that he will take his bag later. He then went into a small room through the kitchen downstairs and grabbed a large glass of water. He took his coat and hat and headed outside. There he met Joe a outside and told him that everything was fine. Both his wife and the child were doing good. It was around five in the morning and there was not too much light. While walking towards his home, he was accompanied by a few miners who had just completed their night shift. As their footsteps echoed, he had only one thing in his mind. His heart was full of thought that he finally accomplished something he thanked god see this entire chapter revolves around the birth of a child first the doctor saved the expectant mother then he saved the child who was thought to be stillborn the doctor made frenetic efforts to give a new ease leash of life to the newborn child here we see that amongst many other things or many other activities we do in our life the most beautiful thing one can ever do is giving life to someone here everyone would have hard would have been heartbroken might have even lost the zeal to live if the child would not have survived but that one single life gave life a hope to everyone as well as a new perspective to the doctor as well we complete the chapter here. In the upcoming videos, we'll be discussing the question and answers and main points. Thank you. Om Namah Shivaya.